Thank you, Ken and Mary, for being here in this conversation. And we are at Merida on a conference on enriching collaborative practices across cultures. I wanted to talk to you as, as if we are having coffee or tea or at the bar, and how do we talk about relational practices and how you have kind of lived these ideas in your personal life? So. Yeah, I'm really actually very glad you raised the question because, I mean, we live with the ideas all the time, but, and we very much have the feeling if these ideas are not part of our lives, then what are we doing with them? I mean, if they're just abstract floating around in books and so on, that's, you know, why do them? Mm -hmm. And generally we talked about professional practices of various sorts, but the, then the question, well, if we don't actually have practices that we work out on paper and then perform, but is it possible these ideas have filtered down into our lives and mm -hmm. seep there and nestled and affected? Mm -hmm. And I think that's really a good question. Mm -hmm. One of the feelings I've had is that there's a kind of a general consciousness of construction back there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the sense that whatever is said could be said otherwise or not said at all or said differently mm -hmm. or one could find the contradiction to it that is that there's nothing that is put in motion as the real and the right and the good that's necessarily in stone. Mm -hmm. and so that you're constantly aware of that you're creating the realities as you talk and you're going to live in them. Mm -hmm. And if they're not working for you, hey, and say it, it again. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be any particular way. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, a sense we can do better Maybe you'd like to tell that story of one of the ways we've tried to do better. By the way, you I don't know if you know, but we've been married now, I think, 42 years. Wow. Wow. Actually, it will be 43, I guess, this okay. year, since we, it's odd we number. It. <laughs> We're still <laughs> we <make> together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's something that, to me, it's prior to that you also have to understand, too, and that is that... <coughs> I mean, you're conscious of the construction, but the constructions are also actions in a relationship. And in that sense, they're like performed actions. That they're not only, say, talk about the world, but they do the world in certain respects. So you also begin to then say, well, look, when you talk about yourself and your emotions and <coughs> your likes and dislikes, there are also performances. And are you saying that to yourself? Like sometimes when you say, oh, change the tone of the voice, are you saying Not always, because you get caught up in the realism yeah. and you're always doing the real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, and Performance is real too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, everything is real while you're doing it, yeah. but the question, I mean, most of this comes up if it's not going well, we haven't done well. Yeah. Um, I think the story you're referring to, and I'm not sure, uh, okay, so I come home late one day from work, and I'm in a kind of um, a grumpy mood because something hasn't gone well. I come in the door. No, I'm mad. <laughs> I'm the one who's mad. <laughs> it's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> you, d you just did it. <laughs> did, did you do the construction right in this That's right. No, no. We're, oh, sorry. Well, if you want me to tell a story, you have to let me tell the story. And then you know not what? tell me it's the wrong I don't, story. I don't want you to tell the story. <laughs> don't Later, tell story. don't tell that story. <laughs> um, so about? Well, anyway, it is the case that when it doesn't work out, for example, right now, mm -hmm. when something doesn't work out, then you kind of can step back uh -huh. and let start again. I'm very sorry. I asked you to tell a story. No, no, I tell I a story. <laughs> you say, don't tell that story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So let's talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is the kind of thing. It's like yeah. you get into these kind of like jams sometimes. Yeah. And it's just natural. It happens all the time. Yeah. Uh, how to get out of it. And how do you not make the other meaning, which is, Mary, you're always doing this, or Ken, you're always doing this. How do you right, not get into right. that story? Right, right. Well, I'll do one of these kinds of ways is it's very easy in our culture to find who's, who's at fault at something. Right. Very easy to find. And if you're working, you know, moving and living together, something goes wrong, oh, mm, you didn't do that. Mm -hmm. mm, right? So, and then the, uh, it's very easy to want to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And maybe find out why it was actually the other person's mm -hmm. fault. So you get into this kind of blame game, we call it. 
Now we have this one case which has been awful for us in a way. We don't like really to do shopping very much, particularly in a mall, mm -hmm. particularly around Christmas time when you've got to buy these things. So we'll say, okay, let's go together and we'll split up the chores. Yeah. You do this and I'll do this and then we'll meet back here. You know, you go to that store, I'll go to that store and we'll meet back and then we'll go to, you know, do the next thing. Well, clear always, somebody gets back first. Mm -hmm. And then they say, hmm, I could do one more little thing while he's or she's waiting. Mm -hmm. The other one comes back, oh, well, where are they? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe since they're late, I'll just snip <laughs> over here and, and this may go on, we'll miss each other, and then we'll finally get together, where were you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, well, where were you? Yeah. Well, I only went to do such and such. Well, you shouldn't have done that. I mean, you just get into that, and you right. can ruin an afternoon, because right. you're, like, you're like four moves into that game, and you've killed the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you realize, hey, we don't have to do that. It's like you're sucked into a cultural convention. Right. Why don't we just not do it. That's do one, it. one of the things that we do that, that um, I don't know if we thought we'd talk about, but when something doesn't go the, the best way, mm -hmm. not a terrible way, we don't do terrible mm. anymore, but when it's not the best way, we can go back and sort of analyze it. Mm -hmm. So for example, we just cannot seem to meet at an assigned place at an assigned time mm -hmm. because each of us is out thinking the other one uh -huh. and so that we know about ourselves and so we're forgiving mm -hmm. that we're not good at that right some of us are more forgiving than others <laughs> <laughs> so what is the performance of forgiveness and what does that mean or look like like i mean i don't have such a problem with this issue he, he, I don't know why. He has more problem than I yeah, do. Yeah, well, I think that always, I mean, you carry traditions with mm -hmm. you, and, and they don't always work together. Mm -hmm. So one of the traditions I grew up with, living with three brothers and so on, is mm, saying your story is like a defeat. Mm -hmm. And I didn't grow up doing that very well. Yeah. <laughs> <He> <laughs> wasn't one it. of my best... <laughs> So I have trouble sort of, and it, it's a little bit like the blame game too, because mm -hmm. I mean, here's a case where constructionism really works. I don't, I don't necessarily have to say that because that's not the only thing I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not like, oh, I'm only sorry. Mm -hmm. So sorry becomes a performance. Mm -hmm. And once I get into that head, <clears throat> then it's a little easier for me. So it's, it's become easier, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not just something I traditionally do. It's like um, so. Is it a choice when you say sorry becomes a performance? Is it something that I'm now? I like the way it, the way you say it, the consciousness of construction. Are you consciously saying, okay, I can choose to be different, and I'm going to do this? Yeah, I mean the this. thing. I mean you may feel differently about this, but I if things are just going well. I don't think it comes into play very much. Mm -hmm. It's mainly when you hit the rough spots. Mm -hmm. Or when you want to save something that's really good, mm -hmm. like in remembering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say there are times, lots of times, when I just have the greatest time with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want to, <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to step back from it for a moment mm -hmm. just to say, wow. Mm. Yeah. We've had this feeling sometimes when you um, look back on a period, you don't quite remember anything and it, you're really sorry you let it go or how could it have gone? Where were we last year at this time? And mm -hmm. I can't think. And that trying to um, create memory mm -hmm. by articulating it. Mm -hmm. So if we'll probably, when we leave Merida, when mm -hmm. we're on the plane home, mm -hmm. we'll probably have a set aside of time to talk about what were really the greatest Mm -hmm. moments of being there. What did we really value? So bringing that appreciation, the wow feeling, kind of right. engaging yeah. with it in a way that right. you're stepping away but you're still carrying it with you. Right, right. And then do you want to talk about the drop box? Oh yeah. Go ahead. Too. Well you oh. made it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well we had this experience um, about Christmas time. Mm. 
we got you know the usual letters where everybody's doing great the whole family's great I'm great everybody's wonderful but someone sent us something where they, they each of the couple they would say what was the best film you saw hmm. what was the best moment in nature for you that year what was the biggest disappointment hmm. what did you feel good about as an accomplishment of your profession and they would just do these things and it was really interesting for us. I mean, I read it with great, great interest. Uh, and they had different things, too. So then I thought, we started thinking back, well, what would we answer? Hmm. And we thought, too much was like blurred about the year. I mean, oh, wow. what movies did we actually see last year? Well, you have to think about it yeah. for a bit. Then you say, well, which one was the, I mean, what was the best accomplishment? You really have to do some thinking. We thought, well, we're losing those things. So, what we've done this year, um, this is the Dropbox, we have a, a, a file called Nominations. Oh, <laughs> neat, I see. I and we see. keep it in Dropbox, so both of us can go on it. And anything that really is really good, oh, uh -huh. and could be disappointing, like a death, right. for example, right. you go on Dropbox and you put it in there. Where, what was the, the best dish you you know, if you ate something really nice, you put, what was the best dish? And this is a nomination for that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Or what was the best um, um, uh, experience in nature or something like that. Right, right. But, you know. Best sex. <laughs> <laughs> it's a play. Bring in things right. that you can And you can add a category. Nice. If you think of something yeah. and then you add a category because yeah. it isn't there yet already. So in either one of you just puts that question out and then whenever you have that experience you can drop your You can drop it in there as a nomination. Right. Dropbox is that the where you um, upload files, that kind of Dropbox? Uh -huh. or, okay. It's, it's like or a cloud. It? No, it's a it's metal box. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to show you. Know, no, you. <laughs> it, it, it's like a cloud and you, it's on Mac. It's, on, and okay. you just, it's a little box and you can put a thing in there rather than sending it by email. Got you. Or okay. putting it on a flash See, we're drive. not totally <laughs> I don't think <laughs> you are. I don't think <laughs> pretty close. But yeah. So. Well, I just want to, one of the other things we do is um, we, we used to when we had made uh, the photographs, actually mm -hmm. printed them. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody does that anymore either. But so we'd have these pictures of our kids, but knowing they would see these little albums, we were very careful about what goes in there, mm. and we take things out if they're not looking happy, <laughs> like. <laughs> So we were constructing we were them constructing as them. having a happy <laughs> childhood. <laughs> so none of the bad pictures of the kids ever got in. Of course, we didn't do any bad pictures of us either. We were, you know, those went out the door. <laughs> right away, they never made it the album. <laughs> right, right. So, so then this is a construction of memories in terms of what you want to hold with what intention? That, that it creates the future or is it just about the memories? Well, it's partly... Um, the, what you carry from your life and whether you look back on it, oh God, I don't know, that was a pretty bad or difficult or barren or whatever, and it's a way of kind of filling it up with really good things. Mm -hmm. so it becomes a resource. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I used to do this, um, what I'd call a Reagan Tog book or Rainy Day book. Rainy Day book, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is? Well, <laughs> it's, um, you know, because always you, there are disappointments in life, mm -hmm. things, you know, but there are also some good pieces. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you feel like, oh, this, this is not going well. And so you've, got, you've saved these things where somebody writes and says, mm -hmm. oh, I just love what you wrote, blah, 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 right, blah, right. blah. I got one the other day from yeah, my right, student. And, they, yeah. and yeah, rather than just it. Yeah. throwing them away, they just become part of a thing that, well, if you're really feeling down, go back and look at that a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's not so bad. Oh, it's a rainy day, so yeah. it can give you that lift to the up. <laughs> right. That, that does good. That, yeah. I'm going to have to do that one, because you'd get <laughs> well, the other ones too from your students, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. Are you teaching? Are you teaching anything? <laughs> so what is we supposed to be learning in the new Then you go? throw those away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because it's so much easier somehow to be hurt yeah. by something that's a little critical yeah. than it is to feel totally out of this world yeah, uh, yeah, if, yeah. you know like course evaluations you get 19 great ones and two that say wish I hadn't taken the course right. or would have learned more in basket weaving or something mm -hmm. yeah. 
I want to go back and um, <coughs> talk about emotions for a little bit because we've passed by that. But it's another story that's mm -hmm. sort of interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, we sort of treat emotions as being natural. It's like they just happen and you have like genetic. Well, if you look at it from a constructive standpoint, you know, the, the various um, categories of emotion we have and the way we do them are all parts of cultural history. We've made them up. Yeah. And you can do them or not. And you but are you saying my emotions are made up yeah. in the sense of what I'm feeling in that moment yeah. or something? Yeah. Well, you, what, whatever it is you're doing, is part of a tradition. I mean, you just don't like uh, collapse in a moment. You don't just shout out, you know, I'm furious. Mm -hmm. Like, and you say why, and I say, well, I don't know, it just happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you're furious at certain things, not anything. Mm -hmm. So we really realize that the, you, you, you're, you know, you're kind of constituted as an emotional being by virtue of your cultural history, and you don't have to repeat it. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we have these times early in our marriage where um, Mary's idea, if you're kind of irritated and angry, then you just put it away and mm -hmm. go on to something else. <clears throat> I mean, which is really nice. It's like something happens and then, oh, well, forget it. Well, I grew up kind of by, a, I think, largely influenced by my father, who would, he was a sulker, mm -hmm. that is. Something happened and he could go into this shell mm -hmm. and punish you for days oh. by not talking. To you, yeah. Really, this was mm -hmm. difficult. Well, that was my sort of, I learned how to do that pretty well. Well, this wasn't working because <clears throat> we'd have this little poof, mm -hmm. she'd just get over it and 20 minutes, I'd be so there. She's happy, skipping lunch. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll soak some more for that. That's fuel, too. And she's like, oh, oh. <laughs> come on. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so but it wasn't working. Do not say you sulked overnight, because you never did. Oh, yeah, that's another issue. But a long time. I could really go on for, uh, for hours. Yeah, yeah. It's a little drama helps to bring yeah. out the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And we both realized, well, let's yeah. not do that anymore. Yeah. We, let's find some other ways of dealing with this. And yeah, so uh, I learned <coughs> to be more controlled of, in the way I might express myself because it, it, it works better. Mm. It is much better mm -hmm. not to have angry interludes. So how is that relational in terms of, are you looking out for your relationship? Are you looking out for yourself, for him? What, when you say you have to be more careful, what, what are you being care, caring about? Are us? Uh, oh, Our I th yeah, that, yeah, I think one thing, you, again, this is consciousness of construction, that you need each other mm. to create and sustain what's valuable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, the, this really has come to the fore a couple of times when one of us has been abroad, mm -hmm. alone, mm -hmm. and you get off the plane, you're in the city, and you don't actually know what to do anymore. Mm. Why you're there? Mm. What's the fun of Paris mm -hmm. when you're alone? Mm -hmm. But when we're together, you're always making, oh, wouldn't it be interesting to do that? It need, and you need the other one. That mm -hmm. would be fascinating. Did you see that this was going on? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't that be great to go there, and the other one can generate the enthusiasm and then it's really worth doing. Mm. So there's but some sharing there, you're creating together with your sharing. Oh yeah, and, and yeah. And your, your enthusiasm or your passion or your interest and you're putting mm -hmm. together something. Yeah. So you realize you need the other yeah. to keep that reality going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, so take care of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Treat that as um, the most valuable thing you have mm -hmm. as a relational process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't I don't know, maybe we should talk about how we do that, but we have kind of talked about that. A little that. bit, but I was thinking about another thing that to me is really important that a lot of people don't do, and for us it's been very central, and that is trying to make uh, meal times a mm -hmm. kind of a ritual, that is in the mm -hmm. sense that you take time mm -hmm. and you treat it as an event. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't take a lot, but like just for dinner, <clears throat> Put some candles on the table. Mm -hmm. Make it a little bit of an event, mm -hmm. just a little special. Right, right. If it's breakfast, do a little something extra that's different, uh -huh. just to, so you can be It's kind be of marking that you're doing something here together. It's not just you're coming and eating and just Yeah, just eating. Yeah. Oh, you're eating off the, yeah. you know, the, that. 
um, we've agreed nobody gets to read the paper until we've had mm -hmm. breakfast together right. and talk. Oh, that's because cool. otherwise you're just there, oh, you yeah. know. Yeah, you're in your little world. Yeah. So and it's always that care of the relationship it, it, insofar as possible. You also have to be careful because if you draw a ring around that circle of who you are as a couple, mm. there's something that's, that, that's isolating about that. Mm -hmm. And we understand this, we'll get to multi-being in a minute, that we're also parts of a lot of other relationships, mm -hmm. with children, with friends, mm -hmm. grandchildren, mm -hmm. so on, so on, so on, Our colleagues. So if you're going to care for the relationship, you have to care for the relationships in which it's embedded. So it's not just the family. It's not just the family. It's not just her, not just the family. It's on that and that mm -hmm. and that. Now that means some balancing off. Mm -hmm. You've got to be willing that, uh, for example, if she wants to go off on a Saturday mm -hmm. to be to spend time with a grandchild, which she really, 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 really loves to do, mm -hmm. i got to back off because that's really important to her welfare. And mm -hmm. I'd say, mm, I wanted to go and no do blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. You know, give some space, give yeah. some time, yeah. because it's really going to the whole. It's the whole relational complex mm -hmm. that you've really got to care I for. Like that relational complex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the multi-being um, issue. I mean, it's sort of come up as part of the writing, and it has to do with this being made up of a lot of different relationships. So that you know, everything I'm saying is comes out of other relationships of which I'm a part. Mm -hmm. All the words are words that have been used together with other persons, the way in which you do anger, the way in which we do everything. Right. <clears throat> so it's trying to recognize, and uh, um, you might say that anything the person is, is not what, who they are. There are also other things. Mm -hmm. And the way in you, which you can use that in many ways, and and so either use it as resources or um, like um, if, if I've done something in one voice, mm -hmm. she can say, well, you sound like your father. And I right. really, yeah, no, well, that's my father's voice. I can do another voice yeah. and things like that. Or um, that you've got always another voice which could be brought in and that maybe you want to enrich that array. Mm -hmm. That is not to tie each other in to this narrow band of who you are as your soul identity, mm -hmm. but keep trying to sort of press on the boundaries mm -hmm. of um, uh, things becoming s sort of solidified mm -hmm. so that you are one person. I know who you are, I know what you say, blah, 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 but keep pushing those boundaries outwards. Mm -hmm. take, take some risks. So what happens to this notion of authenticity? I mean, it's a very growing notion. Everything like from business to school to uh, education, I, I, I see this word of authentic, be authentic. When, from what you're saying, there is this kind of an array that is more, I, I, actually I'm thinking like a rainbow, you know? Like there are multiple images of you that kind of shine out. And personally, it resonates for me to be that way. But how do you then engage people on this idea where they're like, but who's the core? So who are you, Mary? Who are you, Ken? How do you? We sort of go away from, yeah. from those words. I, I think there's a way in which what we think of as authentic maybe is just uh, an easy flowing interaction mm -hmm. maybe is what feels authentic. We, well, are, yeah. we actually were arguing with uh, important therapist last night about spontaneity mm. and I think that word has similarities to authenticity that somehow <coughs> spontaneity means a response that comes out of nowhere and mm -hmm. I guess authenticity is the response that comes out of the true self mm -hmm. and each of them is much more complicated than mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I don't know if, how you'd yeah. like to talk about it but yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's good. And it raises questions about what's authentic. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's a, kind of a tough one. Yeah, um, yeah. Because we want certain things to be authentic, right. even though conceptually we know they're performed. Mm. So you come up with this mm -hmm. kind of, um, well, it's a borrowed concept of a serious game. This is authentic. We know it's kind of a game, but that doesn't make it trivial. Right, right. <clears throat> or, and I, mean, I don't mean game in a, 
you know, well, let's in, not in, yeah. play a game. But it, right. we know it's performed, but that doesn't mean it's trivial. And I think for me, the, the reason it came up is in learning education right now in higher education, it's authentic learning is taking place. <laughs> like there's some learning that's more real or more core, and the emphasis on how to create conditions for learning that will make that happen. And it yeah. gets back to that singular truth, you know? This is re real learning versus this is a Superficial learning. Right. I think it should yeah. be called post-exam learning, <laughs> you know? <laughs> What's left after the exam is yeah. over? Yeah. But I, I like, want to like, go back to one of these points because yeah. I think it got kind of lost, and that is that <coughs> it's so easy to fall into that tradition of, of true self and identity. Mm -hmm. Who, who this person really is. I mean, they're like a therapist who's sort of trying to find out what the real problem is, mm -hmm. as if there's a real problem behind everything they're saying. It has a key to it. Right. You could turn the key. And, and the way in which day-to-day -day living will tend to just, day-to-day -day living will tend to collapse down all these sorts of possibilities and mm -hmm. potentials. So they're kind of are either lost or abandoned or become more abundant and the person just becomes well, yeah, I know everything you got to say, mm -hmm. said it before, ho oh, hum, and cow. <laughs> so, <laughs> how to keep that yeah. a little bit off center? Mm -hmm. a, a, you know, keep it a little bit keep not little quite fence right. Fence going a little yeah. bit, keep a little yeah. spark in there, yeah, yeah, the unexpected kind of. Um, and maybe even sometimes explicitly try. I mean, this mm -hmm. year we, for example, <coughs> started tango lessons. Now, we don't need to do that. Yeah. But it's a whole fun thing. Mm -hmm. It just opens up a whole other thing. Or we've gone into theater before. We've mm -hmm. been sort of um, neighborhood theater, mm -hmm. com college theater. Mm -hmm. Community mm -hmm. theater kind of small or I think one of the most daring things we ever did that way is that I used to work on grants that he got. Uh -huh. And then we decided one year, no more grants, no more job for Mary. Uh -huh. Like, we were going to change our lives. I, I was going to go in a different direction so that it wasn't just little Mary tugging along beside Big Ken. You know? I was going to have more of my own sort of... Uh -huh professional identity. And was that, so did that lead to the creation of other or other opportunities or was it more like just even the intention that n no more of tugging along with Mary and Grants was, together and then leaving open for what just to emerge? It, well, it, it turned out of course to have a lot of consequences that were good and I also must say that it also related to his epistemological shifts. Uh -huh so that some burden was lifted from him and some opportunities were open for me. So it worked in a lot of ways all at once. I'm just wondering, is there anything else that you think that we should You can tell the story now. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know which story you want me to tell. <laughs> but we talked about creating stories. Mm -hmm. the, the whole narrative side. I mean, we've done research and worked in the area of narrative a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we think of stories as being important in understanding lives, our own lives, mm -hmm. children's lives. Gets more complicated when you have the notion of multi-being mm -hmm. so that you have a lot of facet mm -hmm. to your lives. Mm -hmm. But this is about the day I was angry. Oh, so you tell that story. When I was angry because he was late coming home. Mm -hmm. Obviously he comes home late quite often, but uh, actually it doesn't seem the same anymore mm. but I was not happy for some reason I'd gone over into that unhappy moment mm -hmm. and he comes in the door and I said where have you been why are you so late and he looked at me with this little grin and he said what story would make you happy Wow! <laughs> and I had to laugh <laughs> right right because obviously he knew, I mean, it was consciousness of construction all the way down. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he would bring it forth at that moment both made me laugh because it was a funny reference to constructionism, but it also was a way of saying, I want to please you. Mm -hmm. That's how I yeah, took it. <laughs> multiple meaning there. That's the beauty of it, too, in, in terms of, yeah. and, and again, for me, you know, I'm 
pro play, so there's that playfulness introduces. You can't stay angry there. Oh yeah, I know, and I know. He did it the other day when he was an hour late, and and I was sitting in the rain, and he was lost in the rain on a golf cart. I was under a shelter, I have to say. It was raining and it was dark, and I thought, oh man, where is he? He played too much golf, and so. He comes up on his cart right to where I am and uh -huh. he gets out and he's soaking wet and he looks miserable and he said, please don't be angry with me. So I've had a hard time because <laughs> <laughs> my friend had lost us on the course and uh, I couldn't yeah. get him to turn around. So, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, pleading. Sometimes it's just a request. I mean, what you're saying is that's also a construction where he, he gets to say how he wants you to perform. Yeah, well, I knew what her performance was going to be in right, that case. Right. And I said, don't, please don't do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you could, I mean, th that's where I've heard about couples, you know, like you could also have already revved up because you knew that she was getting angry. So you come in angry, she's angry, and neither one is conscious and boom, they yeah, go. Yeah. Versus you came in, what do I want to construct, what do I want to create here? And you put that out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's that's well. the beauty of it. I mean, we do it with, with Gus, you know. We use the chess metaphor, though it has other implications. We say, and think about what moves you're doing. Yeah. Wow. How you move, Woo. what are you trying to create here? Yeah. How do you want Dada to respond? How do you want me to respond? Oh, yeah. wow. So I think about it as parenting, which is already talking to children. I believe all concepts, even like respect, is an abstract construct, you know, for a child. It, he, when I ask him, so what is respect? I don't know. You tell me to say thank you, so I say thank you. So it's not a concept he's got on you, really, but we think they know what is respect. So I play with teaching him constructionist ideas by talking <laughs> in terms of, what are you doing here? How are you creating your life? That would be yeah. a good book. Wow, among many, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thank you for this conversation. I know we could go on. And it's, yeah. it's really rich. I like that we moved away from a more academic to a more personal. But no, I really like that. I'm really yeah. glad you did that. So That's a good, I appreciate great idea. it.